Okay, welcome class. Welcome dear participants. Uh, today is uh, the 12th day of June 2019, Democracy Day in Nigeria, the first one. So we're all on holiday. You know, by the way, I'm in Cairo uh, in Egypt and uh, I'm reaching you from Egypt, five and a half hours by flight on Egypt uh, from Lagos. So this is a clear example of open and distance learning uh, first lesson for this training. Uh, it's going to be introductory and uh, I'd like to thank you for registering for the course. Uh, during registration you will ask for your password and I'm reminded of this teacher who, who, who asked the student about why is your password? Why, why did you put your password as something? And the student said because the computer said my former password was a strong, strong enough like Samsung. I hope you go through with your registration and we are now good to go. So what do we have for this lesson? We have three objectives to uh, achieve. One, uh, there will be an explanation of what open and distance learning is. O-D-L, open and distance learning. And they will identify the advantages and disadvantages of ODL. And then we'll narrow down to e-learning. We'll clarify concepts relating to e-learning. Let me welcome you all to this uh, workshop. Our participants being uh, from Bell's University of Technology, uh, Aguirre, Jesu, Robo, Oderi, Oderi, De, Obundende, Uyetiro, and from the Institute for African Culture and International Understanding. We have uh, Adebayo, Adebi, Yakinkotu, and all of these very senior people who will want to learn about how to deliver e-learning. Because we have the Virtual Institute for Culture in the Digital Environment. Now, let me go to the site so you see what we have. Yeah, so this is the site of our Virtual Institute for culture in the digital environment, Vig Day. Uh, we are counting down to its launch. It was formally launched in the presence of uh, top notched UNESCO people from about 100 countries in Paris on the 5th of June. So we have formally launched it, but the courses will uh, begin uh, uh, in earnest. These are some of the short courses we'll be rendering, and uh, we are committed to building capacity of stakeholders in the cultural sector, on the protection and promotion of diversity of cultural expressions in the digital environment. And uh, these are our facilitators, um, some of them, if you go like this, you'll be able to see. Uh, we're missing Ms. Wachuku, we're going to get her, uh, the technical people will get her picture uh, uh, running very soon. And of course, this is Bell's Investor of Technology, the first and the best the first private university of technology in Nigeria. And uh, we're going to start, the, the university is planning to start its distance learning center very soon. So we have participants from uh, the university in this training program. Yeah, so you can see, just, you can see this arranged in alphabetical order of names within uh, the institution uh, from Lagos State University. I have my master's and PhD uh, students in computer science education. Very brilliant students, one and all. And uh, number 31, so we have 31 participants. And number 31 is a former vice chancellor. Big man, we have a big man here. Former vice chancellor of Crawford University. So he's, he's now being sought globally to be vice chancellor of a university in. Uh, yeah, so let's begin with uh, first objective, explaining open and distance. Uh, we have a few questions to ask ourselves. What is ODL? How does it operate? Can the quality be the same as not ODL? What are the challenges? And how do we meet the challenges? So before we go on, I'd like you to just reflect for a few seconds about what ODL means. Uh, mommy, Mr. Wajuku, can you tell us what is ODL and how it operates? 
uh, Femi, do you think there's a difference between those? Fortunately, your wife works in the National Open University of Nigeria. Can you tell us whether there's a difference between, <clears throat> excuse me, products of the National Open University of Nigeria and the one from the university you attended, University of Adwikiti? What are the challenges? What do you think the challenges are? Now you are participating in an ODL program, Open and Distance Learning. So what do you think the challenges are? What are do made the challenges? These are the questions that we're going to be answering and then we'll be looking at some models. So uh, you know we said open and distance learning. Open, when you say it's open, what does it mean? It implies that the barriers to learning, the barriers and all these restrictions are removed. The barriers in terms of time, like like now, I want her behind, I want one hour ahead of Nigeria. So uh, you are one hour behind me. So we're not meeting at the same time. So it removes that barrier. So it's open. The barrier in terms of place. I am about uh, 3,000 kilometers away from the you participants in Nigeria. So and we're having that class. So we're studying regardless of the time, regardless of the location. So that makes it open. So we talk about open education. You know, we're talking about open and distance learning. Or open and distance education. Your Excellency, Ambassador Labiron, who is a member of this class, can, can you tell us what is the difference between education and learning? You know, we we'll say ODL, O D L, open and distance learning, and then open and distance education, O D E. Yes, Your Excellency. Oh, yeah, Your Excellency, you are right. I can read your mind, though. <laughs> what Your Excellency is saying, which is correct is that open and distance education is the broad thing and open and distance learning is the learning within open and distance education so open education is an approach to teaching and learning you can see learning is inside it which emphasizes the students right to make decisions and which, and which views the teacher as facilitator so if you notice i call myself a facilitator so not not like not like a you know normal teacher uh, it in, in, it's individual, individualized. So you can read the, through this because I do not like people who will begin to read a PowerPoint slide line by line. You know why? Because they are telling you, the listener, that you can't read, you are foolish. So me, I'm not going to do that. I just pick out the few words. You can see I've, added, I've uh, highlighted them. This is a definition by Smith 20. Open education has you know, a group of elements, clusters of people. So we are uh, not people of uh, facilities of, uh, of elements, let's say. You have e-learning, which we are going to be looking at you know, today. Uh, e-learning, we're going to be looking at e-learning. As a member of the open education family. We are going to be looking at distributed learning, learner-centered, open distance education, flexible learning, OER. Uh, Ibukun, can you tell us what OER means? Or oh, Mr. Giri, can you tell us what OER? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are both correct. How do I know? Because me, I can read your mind. Uh, by the way, OER is Open Educational Resources. And we'll be looking at it at some point. You know, this training, not be theory, not be say, come listen to lectures. We're going to have hands-on practicals. So that at the end of the training, in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to set up the e-learning for yourself by the best tech people. You'll be able to set it up to set up your distance learning center. And for Professor Sam Anyonlaja, Daniel Anyonlaja, who is going to head a big university in Botswana, you are going to tell them that you are going to set up open and distance learning for them. And also for our institute, in Abeokuta UNESCO Institute, Vigde, you're going to set it up. So uh, uh, let's go on to distance. This is open and distance. Distance, of course, we mentioned it in the in the word of uh, when we're talking about open. It means the learner and the tutor or facilitator are physically separated, you know, and in between, you know, we're separated, but something is in between. It's not blank. So we have some technology, either print, electronic, or telecommunication, in between, in between us. So uh, if we are now bringing them together, it's open and distance education. 
which will use alternative approaches, design education methods, open learning to deliver education and training. And uh, it removes barriers to study. Uh, you can enroll anytime you want. Like now, I asked you to enroll from, uh, I think yesterday, you know, to enroll for this course, which you did. Uh, you can study from many places. I'm repeating myself now, but it's important for us to know the key elements. You can study from any place. You can take on your, you see this, this uh, lesson, this is my lesson, this video lesson. Uh, Damilola or Damilari in ICIU. You can on your phone, Damilari, I think you are attending a course in uh, Oshobo. You can on your phone, you know, just go through this lesson. And Damilola is doing a course at the University of Ibadan. You can, you know, anywhere. And uh, some people who are not able, who are, who are disabled, you know, you can, these things are available for them. There are a number of challenges. Number of challenges. I recall that when we had a Skype meeting on Monday, it was rainy in Abeokuta. I was in Paris, UNESCO Paris, and uh, you 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 have such challenges. Power supply is a challenge to drive your device, either the laptop or the notebook or the or your phone. You can charge your phone. The other one is the poor reading culture among the youth. Because we expect them to read. Yeah, people are not ready to read anything. They're only ready to read their Facebook pages, Instagram, and all of that. And we have some challenge with some practical subjects. How do you, for instance, deliver to deliver a course uh, in nursing, in medicine? But the good news is that open and distance learning is catching up in terms of delivering these practical subjects to uh, anybody. And of course, we have some crooked tendencies. People plagiarize. When you give them an essay to write, I know of uh, some distance learning centers in the Nigerian University system. The students there, give them an essay to write. They will contract it out. Somebody go, I beg, let me write this thing. Take 5,000 naira. And of course, those people are there to do the thing for them. So we will open shop in universities to do project for them. Just give them money. They do. They write up your project, your undergraduate project for you. A lot of academic fraud is uh, uh, is happening. Now, this is one of the challenges in implementing ODL in Nigeria. Indeed, anywhere in the world. And of course, you have very few people are trained to run ODL, shameful enough. And uh, that's why I've, I've been running this training, you know, over the years, several years, so that we can have many more people who are able to have uh, the technique, the knowledge, the skills to deliver ODL. And one challenge is the perception that, oh, wait, wait till you, where you go your university. Oh, I went to this day online, this, ah, go and sit down, they, 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 they have taught you nothing there. So there's that perception of the, of the public of open and distance learning being inferior. But to overcome these challenges, there are a number of things that can be done. Uh, Ambassador DB, if you are there, can you tell us a few things? And uh, VC, Professor Anyolaja, if you are not too busy, sir, can you tell us what's on this, uh, how we can overcome these challenges? Yes, I can see that you have mentioned some that I've listed here, but let me then collectively as a class uh, walk us through them. It is better for you to start small and scale up. In other words, if you have like 20 programs that you want to deliver by ODL, don't start the 20 programs in one session. Start with one, pilot run it, see what the uh, hiccups, the obstacles are, correct from your pilot study experience, and then move on. That is what National Investors Commission is doing now. If you apply, if Best Tech, if you apply, like I'm sure you're going to do very soon, to NUC, say, I want to run a course in uh, business administration. And they will tell you, oh, I want to run a course in business administration, when in computer engineering, computer science, and all that, say, no, no, no. Start with one. 
So I will see how you grow with that one. So that's uh, how the challenge is uh, being uh, scaled. The other is extensive planning. Hey, you can't just say wake up one day. Oh yeah, uh, I need the license to do, to, to to run an ODL uh, program or open and distance uh, open and open and distance learning center in the university. Like for us at uh, the institute, we have you know been running. Oh, we we starting a big day, a virtual institute for culture and digital, digital environment. We had a workshop earlier some months back, I think it was in April, where we started developing the handbook. And then we're going to start, we're going to be training, training ourselves so that before we deliver, we'll have attained some competencies in it. The other is funding, you know, there's uh, inadequacy in funding. And uh, so we have to fund it properly, fund the system properly. The learner support system is key in any open and distance learning system. What is learner support? Learner support is the student who is far away place, now needs your assistance. When he or she is uh, uh, listening to the lesson video or uh, reading uh, the course material online at 2 a.m. <laughs> See this learner, she will be able to call, it should be 24 hours, seven days a week. You should have a learner support where you address the needs of the learners, the academic needs, the psychosocial needs of the learner. You know, we put address them. Yeah, let's take a learner who's taking a test and an online test, and he or she has some challenge with uh, the technology. You should be able to call up uh, the learner support uh, system to bail him or her out. They should have training. You have all our course tutors uh, and management people should undergo local and overseas training. Uh, by Monday, the, 7th, the uh, 17th, yes, 17th of June, 2019, UNESCO is running, uh, let me even see if I can pick that up now. Yeah, so this is uh, the invitation, uh, the invitation, regional workshop on using by UNESCO, UNESCO, the regional office here. Uh, your, your regional workshop on using online learning and MOOCs to improve quality higher education, Abuja. Uh, that's the 17th to 21st of uh, June. So I've been asked to give the uh, the keynote address at this uh, conference, at this workshop, by the way. Uh, I'm pleased to invite you to deliver. Let me make this slightly bigger. So this is all part of the training. I'm also going to learn that. I'm going to deliver a keynote address there. Uh, the, the theme of your presentation, creating and funding of virtual investment in Africa, challenges and opportunities. Uh, so that's what uh, is going to happen. And if you look at uh, uh, the program uh, by ECOWAS, UNESCO, ECOWAS, National University of Nigeria, uh, National Investments Commission, and now. So if you look at the things that we, we go to the learning, development, design, development, and use of an online course. Uh, we have uh, one minute. Okay. Story and design of a MOOC. That's massive open online courses. And uh, a couple of other things there. Design and development. So it goes on like this. So. Yeah, so we need local and overseas training for our course tutors, management, and technical staff. Uh, I'm sure that very many uh, stakeholders who are interested in uh, open and distance learning delivery in Nigeria will be attending that course. And then the, overcoming the challenges, mobile technologies are helping out now because on the phone, on your phone, you can get everything that you want, all the resources for open and distance education, like in the past, where you then depend on electricity powering your laptop or your desktop, and you need UPS. Now, UPS, no day game. Just go, get everything done on your phone. And then we uh, one other area for the coming challenges is in partnering local ICT and uh, communication industries. So the beauty of ODL is that I like this quote, that instead of having to fit our lives 
around studying, we can make study fit around us. Don't you like that quote, uh, Dr. Ayotella, a rector? I'm sure you like that quote. So now let's go to the next part, the, the, the third part of our, the third objectives of this, of this lesson, number one. E-learning. What do we talk about e-learning? We look at the concepts, theories, and uh, the applications. So I've already said this one. But before we begin, before we begin, dear 31 uh, participants. Yeah, so is it e-learning? Small either with a hyphen and learning? Is it e-learning without a hyphen? Is it capital E and the hyphen and the capital L learning? Or is it E learning without the hyphen? Which one we want? Which one is the correct one? The answer, dear 31 participants, is that there is no correct answer. It's a matter of preference. The important thing is for you to be consistent. And you notice when we go along that I am consistent. And I'll tell you that my preference is this. The reason why my preference is this is because, see, I will show you in another few seconds. If we want to write email, in those days we write it as E, there's a hyphen, and then mail. But now you want to write email, you know they put the hyphen there. So if you go back, let me go back. So we have email. In those days it would be E, then die the mail. But now it is there's no dash, it's just email. So you so 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 you know like this. So if it's not starting a sentence, I uh, use it like this. You learn it. If you start a sentence which we have to have the capital, then I start it. I do it with I do it like this. So that is my preference. But it needn't be your preference. You can take anything that you want. And I said I'll tell you in a few seconds. Look at what has happened. In the early days of this thing, not 2005, the blue one is e-learning, my preference. The, the, this one is not the one. You can see the e-learning, people loved e-learning you know, at that time with the hyphen. Not one with the hyphen, but by about 2000, the middle of 2007, it was equal in terms of usage globally. But then later, the one without hyphen started coming up, started coming up. Today, 2019, the one without hyphen is what you get in many places. But that is not to say Dear Mr. Giri, dear Bayo, Bingwe, Bizaki, Mrs. Bingwe, Akintayo, Bayo himself, and Accountant General of the Federation. It's not that. This one is wrong. It's still there, but fewer people are using it. So, what are we going to learn with regard to healing? A little bit of history of it, a little bit of history. We're going to look at definitions and the concepts. We're going to look at advantages and disadvantages. If you if you theories relating to e-learning and there's some African success stories, please remember that this lesson, this lesson one, is an introduction to open and distance learning. And as I said, e-learning is a subset in the inside of open and distance learning. Let, let, let's go back in history. Let me share with you. Uh, the, uh, uh, the history of e-learning. It's as old as computer technology. And uh, by the 19th century, you know, 19th century would mean 1801, 1802, 18 up to 1899. That's the 19th century. So that e-learning was operative. The term, the term, that this word itself, e-learning, was has only been existing since 1999. How many years ago? Just 20 years ago, it's as recent as that. 1999 was when we started using it. So, what are terminologies that are used along with e-learning? Is online learning or virtual learning? As you can see, educational technology has evolved uh, for the paper from this all the way down, all of this like that. And uh, we're going to definition now. No, we're just talking about it, but what is it? How can we define it? I've defined e-learning, you can see, I keep putting this one there as part of the old method. Is the process, so it's a process. E-learning is a process. What you are learning is a process of, it's a process. 
of acquiring knowledge and skills that are delivered through electronic media and other technology mediated resources. And uh, we say technology driven media. Which, what, what are these technology driven media? Uh, when we're looking at them, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there, are, there are three types of definitions that you will get. In the literature, the definitions that relate to technology driven issues. So you can see one by Guri Rosenblatt, Rosenblatt 2005. I'm not going to read this one, so you can pause this video anytime. Because the object of this training, not be theory, not be this, just to satisfy all righteousness. That is why me and they go through all these definitions. But all you need to know is what I put, put, put here. The process where you acquire knowledge and skills through electronic media and other technology media resources. So we have these definitions by different people. Yeah, you have delivery system oriented definitions. E learning is delivery of education, learning is online education, and all of that. You have definitions relating to communication orientation. Like this. As I said, though, this video, you can post it anytime and you can read through these definitions and uh, uh, pick up a few things from them. Educational paradigm oriented definitions is uh, some of them. Some of them. Some of them. Some of them. So let me go to some concepts. When we talk about e learning, we talk about synchronous, synchronous learning. Synchronous. What does it mean? Uh, Mr. Giri, what does synchronous learning mean? Synchronous. Of course, as you can see from here, and I believe that's what Mr. Giri is thinking about. Synchronous, synchronous learning refers to, <laughs> that reminds me of uh, Sonia, the synchro system. Uh, it refers to a learning event in which the group of students are learning at the same time, synchronously at the same time. So you can find some examples here when a lecturer uh, is teaching face-to-face, -face, teaching face-to-face, the learners and teachers are at the same place at the same time. So that's synchronous. We're doing this together. But take, okay, this is another example. Uh, so let's watch a live web stream of a class. Of, of, of a class. Let, let's assume that I'm delivering this thing live to you. Uh, you are now learning synchronously. But you see, this, this video, this lesson that I prepared this morning, June 12th, and this video, I've prepared it and I'm delivering it to you. I'm not, I'm delivering it to you not at the same time as I am talking. No, no, no. So you'll see the other, the other difference now. So synchronous learning event, you are watching at the same time while some are taking part in this discussion. What about asynchronous? It's like the opposite of it. Uh, it's a student center teaching method. I use online learning resources to facilitate information outside the constraints of time and place among a network of people. Meaning that this one may I do now in the asynchronous. You are not here and they deliver the thing, but you can all together, you know, uh, listen to me at the time that is convenient for you. Asynchronous. I mean, it's not at the same time. That's the meaning. Asynchronous. Okay. There's another word. The third one, you know, we're talking about synchronous. We're talking about asynchronous. Now let's talk about blended learning. Blended learning has some other synonyms, so some other, you can call it hybrid learning, you can call it mixed learning, or you can call it integrated learning. What does that one mean? That one means that uh, if you have a school like FUNAB or like Bellstech, and you have a distance learning center in Bellstech, so you already have your conventional students doing face-to-face, -face, and then you have the open and distance learning also there. So the conventional student can come to class and read and uh, listen to a lecture by Professor J.D. or Jeremiah or J.D. or the Vice Chancellor and still take some courses online. So that's blended. You know, blender now, blend them, uh, apple, onion, this thing together. That's blended learning. So blended learning is e learning combined with traditional classroom methods and independent study. Well, we've learned a lot of this lesson, a lot of this morning, so I'm going to go fast. 
we have some theories of e-learning. Me, today, I'm not going to bother you. But I have all the theories, the description, and the assumptions about the learning on the following slides, which you can discover learning, uh, social development by Vygotsky, uh, and all that. So let's go on to the advantages of, of uh, e-learning and disadvantages. We also learn them from the model one, that's open and distance learning. So advantages, it diminishes problems related to in-class teaching, learning time is reduced, increased retention application, expert knowledge is communicated, access by learners global, uh, aiding equal opportunities, immediate access to information. We have more advantages here. Self-pacing. In other words, like this lesson, you can pause it at any time, pace it. If you are tired, just stop it, go and do some other things, and then come back and uh, uh, continue watching it. And it re reduces stress. So because you can't pace it, <laughs> you, it reduces stress. The only stress you get now when you come to test or Friday, my friends, Friday, we get test. So you better go through this lesson because the test will be drawn from the entire lesson of today. So. You can revise topic as many times on demand, interactivity, you are not there. So you can have a few flexibility. It visualizes instruction. It accommodates different types of learning styles. So the advantages are, as we also said before, technology related. Technophobia. Some people just don't, you know, uh, uh, they don't like technology. Uh, I, I know of some people, hmm, they do themselves so. That uh, are not able to launch the, <laughs> launch uh, PowerPoint software on their machine. They know themselves, so I don't mention names. So, uh -huh. uh, on availability of required technologies, limited access to computer, uh, feel isolated, and missing social contact. You see, I like this social con con contract uh, contact bit as a disadvantage. You are a, you are a learner from a distance. You are all alone in your room in your car you know but when you come do a luta together you shut you, you enjoy a mini class so the social contact is uh, reduced but of course that can be overcome by your organizing some hybrid or, or or blended learning where the stress can also come to a learner center and then they interact with themselves uh there's also the feeling that communicating largely with a machine you know so you need to see me now but don't worry my next class i'm going to introduce uh, you're going to see me because i'm going to have some introductory part of the video uh, so you feel like you're just communicating with a machine so uh let's look at traditional e-learning approaches classroom uh, physical limited in size e-learning unlimited it can be anywhere anytime the content, PowerPoint transferences, and all that collaboration, which is multimedia, digital library on demand, personalization. This is one learning path, just one learning path. But here, learning path and pace determined by the e learner. E learning, um, teacher and learning is one, one to one. More interactivity is learner centered. Uh, benefits is convenient, self service, private learning, self paced, uh, flexibility. Cost effectiveness, the virtual learning environment, share lessons among schools, reduce material costs, reduce travel accommodation, and all that consistent uh, benefits. Your application as a teacher is to use all available technology, uh, lay foundation for lifelong learning. Uh, what are the tools that we use for e learning, which we are going to be using in this class? The email, for instance, that I used to communicate with all of you. Uh, the chat, we're going to be having chats on the uh, Skype platform and everywhere else. We're going to have an online forum. And when you do, we are going to contribute to the discussion forum. Uh, the web, uh, video conference, that's what we're going to be doing on Saturdays for our, uh, our live uh, virtual class. And uh, the last bit I want to talk about here is the learning management system. That's a tool. That's actually the heart of the matter for this course, which I'm going to be working you uh, uh, through. There have been a lot of success stories 
in Africa. I want to mention a few of them. There's the Ethical Virtual University and the Virtual Institute for Education Pedagogy, which I served as director, the founding director of that, uh, that institute uh, in 2001. Can you imagine that? 18 years ago, I started this institute and we're training professors, 6,000 professors and senior lecturers from the Nigerian University system. It was awesome. Then we won the contract for the Virtual Institute for Higher Education in Africa. That's a UNESCO uh, UNESCO Institute. I served as school director of that institute. I was training about 10,000, you know, uh, academics, professors, senior lecturers, all these people from all over Africa, actually from 44 countries. I was school director and I delivered uh, a lesson there. Also, the Office of the Head of Service of the Federation uh, e-learning program, that's for, for the federal government. I also directed that. I was director of that uh, uh, of that program, uh, training about 70,000 federal civil servants all over Nigeria. And LESG e-learning program for secondary school students and teachers at the LASU QIC online, and a lot more. Now, these are the ones uh, that I, I've been concerned with. And as I mentioned, uh, since 1999, I've been in this ODL business, not big theory, in practice, practice, practice. So in concluding, what about the future of e-learning? Uh, concluding, we examine a bit of the history, definition, and all that. Now, in another few years, 20 years we just feel you're going to have a large proportion, almost 70% of our schools globally adopting e-learning. So I want to congratulate you for taking this very wonderful step of learning how to succeed in this future by being part of uh, this training. Uh, there will be several emerging technologies that will artificial intelligence, especially that will help to improve uh, the delivery system. The next lesson will be going to the heart of the matter, and that will be taking you to the learning management system, Moodle, 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 Moodle platform, and you see how that one goes. So until next lesson, the participants, it is by from me, Peter. A Okibukola, you want to know what my A is? A is Akishola, Peter Akishola Okibukola, uh, from Cairo, uh, in Egypt. Remember, uh, on Tuesday, uh, on Wednesday, you're going to have the discussion forum. On Friday, you're going to have the, uh, what is it? You're going to have a test. Then on Saturday, we'll just be preparing for a virtual, uh, virtual class. So, my dear, Everybody, it is uh, bye bye from me and God bless you.